Yo, what is up, guys? James Carter TV here for my NBA season predictions extravaganza. Here on October 28th, the opening day for the NBA, or opening night, I should say. And I'm going to be boom, 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 sending out predictions. We're going to do it pretty quick, more quick than we did the NFL, just because, I mean, there's a lot of shit in the NBA. There's 82 games, there's this, there's that, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we're going to go through this pretty quick, but if you have any complaints, comment down below. We'll talk about it. You'll yell at me. I'll confront you, and we'll have a great time. So with that said, let's start off with the first seed in the Cle uh, in the Eastern Conference. I already spoiled it. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. A lot of people are high on the Chicago Bulls. I was high on the Chicago Bulls last season. Hell, I picked them to win the NBA championship last season, and how well did that work out? I am no longer trusting the Bulls to do anything magnificent. I will pick them to do good stuff, but no longer will I pick them to do anything magnificent. The Cleveland Cavaliers will finish first, and I have them with a record of 58 and 24. Followed by the Chicago Bulls at 56 and 26. They are still going to be a very good team if, as long as Derrick Rose is healthy and it appears to be in the form he was when we last, well, hell, when we last saw him playing well, which was 2011. So, um, I, you know, the Bulls, maybe they finish first, but I'm not putting my money on that. Not again. We have the Washington Wizards with as a third seed, 51 and 31. I love the development of John Wall. I think that will continue also the, the development of Bradley Beal. And I love the addition of Paul Pierce in free agency. He's going to give them a veteran presence that they need on that starting line. I'm at. Again, though, I said this last season. A lot of people say the Wizards are young. Oh, Wizards are young. Well, they have two young players, and that's it, okay? They have John Wall and Bradley Beal, and then after that, you have Marcin Gortat, you have Nene, you have Martel Webster. These guys are not young. They have two young players, and Otto Porter. They're not a young team. They have young players, and these young players will get better, and they will get better. But they're not a young team. All right, we have the Charlotte Bobcats finishing with the fourth seed, 48 and 34. Love the addition of Lance Stevenson. Al Jefferson was playing like a beast last season. They're going to continue to win games. They're going to win 48 games this season and be the fourth seed. The fifth seed, we have the Miami Heatles. Yes, they lost LeBron James, but they still have Chris Bosh, who led the Raptors to the playoffs year in and year out. He's going to return to absolutely ph uh, phenomenal form. Expect that of him. Dwayne Wade, God knows how many games he's going to play, but hey, we'll see some stuff from him. And Luol Deng, he's not uh, to be taken lightly either. So the Miami Heat, they finished fifth, and they'll still make the playoffs quite easily. Sixth seed, we have the Toronto Raptors. Now, yes, the Raptors had 48 wins last season with a relatively young team. But, I mean, there is a reason why that was Kyle Lowry's best year. That was DeMar DeRozan's best year. Are they going to get that kind of production from these guys who haven't been able to play 82 games, haven't been able to play consistently? We'll see. I'm not going to put my money on it. I mean, they'll still make the playoffs, but I'm not going to say that they're going to, you know, improve upon what they had last season. We have the Atlanta Hawks at number seven, and they could be higher. I mean, keep your eye on this Atlanta Hawks team. They missed Al Horford for plenty of the season last season. Now they're going to get him back. If he can play healthy, they're a huge team to look out for. Like I said, if LeBron James would have went to Atlanta, that would have been a superstar team as well. And I, I was on the record, I'm still on the record for saying that. I don't think it's going to really matter, but I'm just saying he could have done that, and the Hawks would have been absolutely great to me. Uh, we have the, oh God, the A seed here, and this was a very difficult pick for me, but ultimately I decided to go with the Detroit Pistons, finishing 38-44 and 44 and getting this. Uh, I, I can't trust either New York teams, the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets. I cannot trust these teams to give me my prediction being right. I just can't do it. Uh, so the ninth seed, well, I mean, it's not even a seed anymore. It's just ninth place in the Eastern Conference goes to the Knicks. Tenth place, Nets. Eleventh place, Pacers. Twelfth place, Bucks. Thirteenth place, Celtics. Fourteenth place, Magic. And fifteenth place, 76ers. If you want their records, they will be down in the description box. Now, let's move on to the Western Conference. First seed, we have the San Antonio Spurs, finishing 62-20. and 20. They were the best team in the NBA last season. What shows us that they're not going to be the best team in the NBA this season? So they're going to keep going with their success, but 
I'm not done with them quite yet. I'm going to have a theory on them. And we'll see if it's right. We'll get into that later on in the video. But number uh, the second seed, we have the Los Angeles Clippers at the second seed. And this was going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. But with a Kevin Durant injury, you just can't trust them. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't touch them. Um, so definitely the Clippers here, 60 and 22. We have the Portland Trail Blazers as the third seed at 58 and 24. Now I don't understand where this hate for the Portland Trail Blazers come from, came from exactly. I mean, this is a team that won 54 games last season with a hell of a young team. Now they're a young team, and now. They're going to get better. Why? Because their players are going to mature. Because the coach is going to coach better. Because they're going to improve. There was a first-year coach, first-year, uh, second-year players. They're a young team. They're going to get even better. But I see people picking Portland to miss the playoffs. I see them picking Portland to be the eighth seed. And I'm sitting here saying, guys, you guys are missing this. They're going to improve on what they had. Portland, 50 and 24, third seed. Fourth, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder, and this is stretching it. But I think Russell Westbrook uh, will be able to lead the Thunder to the fourth seed without the help of Kevin Durant until what will probably be like Christmas, and then Kevin Durant will come back and he will be an absolute beast, and he needs the rest, honestly. I mean, this guy's been carrying the Thunder for how long now? All oh, last season, it was carry, 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 MVP for a reason. He needs the rest. He'll come back refreshed, and we'll see how that works out for them. The fifth seed, we have the Dallas Mavericks, 54-28. and 28. Now, I'm trying to tell you people, the Mavericks had the best offseason next to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, these guys added Chandler Parsons, added Tyson Chandler, added the fat guy from New York Knicks. I mean, this Raymond Felton. I mean, these guys... Raymond Felton is a fat guy from New York. I mean, these guys improved upon what they had and are looking to compete. And I still like Rick Carlisle as a coach. Dirk Nowitzki has a little left in the tank. The Mavericks are going to compete this year. They're going to be a NBA championship contender. They were the only team to challenge the San Antonio Spurs. Took the San Antonio Spurs to seven games last season. For a reason, they're good, and they improve, so look out for that. Sixth seed, we have the Golden State Warriors. Yes, I've yet to say the Houston Rockets. We'll get into them in a little bit. Golden State Warriors at number 6, 52 and 30. They added Steve Kerr um, because of issues with Mark Jackson. I don't think that Steve Kerr is going to be any better than Mark Jackson. This is where the Warriors are going to be. Just because this is where their talent level dictates, to that, that dictates where they should be. But I don't, this is not an indication that I think they did a good job by firing Mark Jackson. This is no indication of such a theory. Um, this is just me saying this is their talent level 60. Now we have the Houston Rockets 7 seed. I'm not high on the Houston Rockets. Yeah, yeah, James Harden. Yeah, Dwight Howard, you lost Chandler Parsons, who was a big part of that equation. You replaced him with Trevor Ariza. Now, yes, Ariza had a bounce-back season, most improved player in the NBA, uh, pretty much. He didn't win the award, but I mean, he was really improved. I don't trust him. I don't trust him to do that again. I mean, there's a reason why he improved so much, because he stunk before. So I could easily see him going back to where he was. Patrick Beverly is not a very good starting point guard in the NBA. Um... And I just, I don't trust Kevin McHale. I, I don't think he's a very good coach at all in the NBA. If you'd ask me to rank the coaches in the NBA, he'd be in the lower half. He'd be in the lower half. I put Eric Spostra above Kevin McHale. This guy has done absolutely nothing with this team thus far. Why is he going to do something now? Why is he going to do something now? Why is this Rockets team going to do something now? If anyone can tell me that, I'd love to know. Uh, because I, I don't see it. And then we have the AC. Now... This is going to surprise some of you, so I'm going to give it a good drum roll. It is not the Memphis Grizzlies. It is not the Phoenix Suns. It is not my Los Angeles Lakers. It is the New Orleans Pelicans that I have making the playoffs. Now, this is me reaching. 
This is me trusting that Tyreek Evans is going to be healthy. This is me trusting that Eric Gordon is going to be somewhat healthy. This is me trusting that Drew Holiday is going to be somewhat healthy. But if they are, you have Anthony Davis who established himself as a superstar in the NBA last season. He was phenomenal. Monty Williams, I trust this coach. He's a little bit on the hot seat. It's time for him to coach. He will coach. And they will be the Phoenix Suns of last season. The semi-Portland Trailblazers of last season. Where they finally figure out their young talent. And they go to the playoffs. The Suns didn't go, but they're damn close. That's what I have. All right, and then from there, ninth seed, the ninth place goes to the Grizzlies. Tenth place goes to the Suns. Eleventh place goes to the Lakers. Twelfth place goes to the Nuggets. I don't know where they are. They're in limbo. Thirteenth place goes to Sacramento Kings. Fourteenth place goes to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And fifteenth place goes to the Utah Jazz. Now I have the Jazz. As a slightly better record than the 76ers, so I have the 76ers as the worst team in the league. That should not come as a surprise to anyone. On to the awards. Most valuable player goes to who else? LeBron James. Now, I think that Chris Paul could contend for this. I think Damian Lillard could contend for this. But ultimately, if you're picking against LeBron, eh, you can't do it. If Kevin Durant was there, I'd do it. Why? Because I, I, me, this guy, your, this face. Pick Kevin Durant to win MVP last season correctly. Uh, so I was on that. But this year, there's no one else. I mean, there's no one else. Uh, LeBron James, uh, maybe Russell Westbrook. But, eh, no, as soon as Kevin Durant comes back, it's his team. So LeBron James, MVP. Rookie of the year. This is not going to come as a surprise again. Jamari Parker. Now, yes, Andrew Wiggins, he might be able to make it now that he's on his own team. Um, but, you know, I, I don't trust it. There, there's a reason why he's known as a project, as a prospect still. Jordan Parker, he's the most NBA ready. I don't think anyone's doubting that. I'm pretty sure if you ask the Timberwolves GM, hey, who's the most NBA ready rookie? He's going to say it's Jabari Parker. Uh, but we have faith in the potential of Andrew Wiggins. I don't think that potential will be realized quite yet this season, but it will happen in the future. Third... Award, we have the most improved player. I mean, I'm going out on a limb. I, I was really trying to scour the earth, trying to find a player here who could be most improved. And I, I God, finding one was very, very, very difficult. Uh, ultimately, I settled on Harrison Barnes. I mean, this is a guy we've been expecting to do something for years now, it seems like. He can't do anything. But as Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson get more attention on the perimeter, that should leave Harrison Barnes some more opportunities. Harrison Barnes, most improved player. Defensive player of the year goes to Serge Ibaka. Okay, yes, I know it's Ibaka, but it's just funny to say that. I mean, this guy is going to need to step up. I mean, with Kevin Durant gone, they're going to need to play defense, and he's going to rack up the blocks because of it. Uh, and he's going to continue to improve. Still a young player. What is it, 25 years old? Still a very young player. Going to keep improving. Defensive player of the year, but man, I, another person to watch out here is known as Noel. I mean, this guy, and also for rookie of the year, we don't know much about this guy, but he could come into the league and he could make a difference. So look out for Nerlens Noel. We have the six play, uh, six man of the year, and it goes to Jamal Crawford. I mean, this guy was great. He's, he's a great six man, and, and I had the Clippers doing well, and in turn him doing well. So he was that coach of the year. Goes to Terry Stotts. Portland Trail Blazers. Now let's get to the finals. Let's start with the Eastern Conference Finals of the Washington Wizards beating the Chicago Bulls in the second round to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. And I have the Cleveland Cavaliers beating the, who would that be, the Toronto Raptors? Uh, no, beating the Charlotte Bobcats to go to the, hell, not even, no, the Miami Heat. I have the Cleveland Cavaliers beating the Miami Heat to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then I have the Cleveland Cavaliers beating the Washington Wizards in six games to move on to the Finals. In the West, I have the Los Angeles Clippers beating the Portland Trail Blazers to advance to the Western Conference Finals. I have the Oklahoma City Thunder upsetting the San Antonio Spurs in the second round to advance to the West Conference Finals. And here's my theory on all of that. 
The Spurs have been to two straight NBA Finals. I mean, the Spurs have played all the way until June, mid-June, for the past two years. That starts to take a toll. I right? it starts to wear you down, and especially with Mario Ginobili playing overseas as well, and Tony Parker playing overseas a little bit as well. They're gonna be a little hampered. They're gonna be limping around a little bit, uh, you know. And then finally, the Thunder run them around, face them down seven games, and get it done. That's my theory on this. Now maybe the Spurs prove me wrong again. But for now, I have the Thunder upsetting them. Now in the Western Conference Finals. I mean, I the only reason I'm picking this team is because of coaching. I think coaching is the only reason I'm picking this team. And Doc Rivers is a hell of a coach. So I'm picking the Los Angeles Clippers to beat the Oklahoma City Thunder in seven games. And finally, the NBA Finals. Who do I have winning the NBA Finals 2015 edition? Well, I can't bet against the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, it's unknown what their team's going to look like, how well they're going to play. But, man, I they, they're, look at that. Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, oh, Kevin Love. I, I, can't, I can't think against that. Not now. Um, it's the Cavaliers in seven games. Now, that's not to say the Cavaliers are going to be a dynasty because they may turn around next year. The Thunder may finally get it right and they may finally win an NBA championship. But this year, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers completing their great story and winning their first title in only God knows how long. And that is it. Until next time, James Carter TV. And on a last note, though. I am so excited for this NBA season. I mean, it is very interesting to me. It's the most intriguing season in the NBA since 2010. Um, it's, everything was just shaken up with the LeBron James move. With this draft class, man, it's going to be interesting. we got to have some superstars under this draft class. Don't know quite who yet. We can assume Parker. We can assume Wiggins. Maybe Exum. Maybe Randall. Maybe Gordon. Maybe Peyton. Maybe Smart. We don't know. We're going to find out. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. So can't wait for the NBA starts tonight. Let's enjoy it. Until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.